you never know what a role is until you get there, but you can look at a script and you say, do I want to do these things? Is this, is this interesting to me? Do I have to learn something? Do I have to discover something? Will I have a chance to discover something? That's what I see. Um, the scenes were well written. Uh, the adventure aspect, the fact that I was going to be mushing, you know, uh, driving these dog teams in this, in this very um, beautiful landscape under really tough conditions, that seemed like a challenge. And uh, that's sort of the centerpiece of the action of the story. So there were many pleasures. This relationship was, for me, because that's what I would be, you know, actively doing, um, was the big draw for me. And to be able to do that with Willem, who was already cast, was very appealing to me. Um, and I spoke to Eric Sincor, our director, who has, who started off as a, as a cinematographer. So he had a very clear idea and, and this, you know, extensive lookbook of, of images that inspired him. And it was very beautiful and, um, his relationship, he had a wolf for like 12 years or something, so he has very deep connections with, with the canine world and, um, and nature. He, he's a, a nature guide and has done tons of um, directing in these, this type of landscape. We were in the Canadian Rockies, which is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been, just breathtaking. So there were a lot of, a lot of reasons to say yes. The story we're telling takes place in Nome, Alaska, in both 1913 and 1925. It's one of the things I love about this movie, actually, is how they jump back and forth between time periods. Um, how we're introduced, we're introduced to Togo as a as a mature dog, and then and then we then we're told his story from when when they first meet him. Um, and you know, it's <laughs> it's Alaska in 1925, so there's not a lot of uh, comforts around, and their home in particular is miles from anywhere, and um, obviously no electricity, no running water, so it's very much about the day-to-day, -day, the running of, of a home and a property and the dogs, and, and yeah, trying to stay alive in that world. Shooting so much outdoors, um, you know, tells you what you can and can't do and uh, you're always in contact with it. It's a fluid thing, and that makes you fluid in your approach to what you're doing. There's no, there's no arriving. You always got to stay on top of it because the target is always moving. <laughs> the, the weather is always changing. Um, so I guess, you know, it, when it's cold, uh, there's no acting required. You're cold. <laughs> you're cold. Um, and, of course, it's, it's, you're creating a parallel experience that is not as dangerous, is not as difficult as his, his, as the true life story, but it gives you a little glimpse, it gives you a foothold, gives you, you're paying a little bit for the authority to feel like you can pretend to be this guy because you're doing it. Mm -hmm. You could not shoot a movie like this with, you know, trailers all around and being taking <coughs> breaks every two minutes to get warm and it was pretty rough. Wendy Partridge was our costume designer and she was just a genius with what she was able to make specifically I mean she did s so much research on the period and the different you know types of people what they would be wearing and those fur coats in particular I, you know she had to create they're all fake fur so she had to create because she didn't want each of them to look the same they couldn't so she created a fake fake seal one fake I mean I don't know what all the animals were but basically she had to pull all these different um, faux furs to create ones that looked like real things and so much so that you know you probably I don't even know if you can see it in the movie but for her it was important that the the framing of the hood are two paws like this, that, and she showed us pictures of those, and so she has fake, you know, I don't know what kind of animal, paws. They, they were so beautiful, and the attention to detail, and um, it was so exciting the first time I put one on, and then she brought me into her workroom, because there were like nine ladies in there, like busting their fingers. They had to make a hundred of these, for Willem and I, and for background, and you know, a lot of it is hand-stitched. I just, I think she was, her care and passion and craft and artistry was just um, impeccable. We've spoken to a number of people today, and they had just gone to a screening, and it was a range of people today. And every single one of them, to me, felt honestly, deeply moved um, 
by the experience and that it was an enjoyable one. So that was, hopefully that will be the case with the Disney Plus viewers. And for me, it was exciting to be able to watch a film with my family because my kids can never watch the work that I do. And we all, we all loved it. So it was, there's, there's something for everyone. It's, I just want to say, you know, from our point of view, we're making a movie. We're happy it's being made. We're happy that Disney is supporting this movie, supporting Ericsson Corps to make this particular story. And we're happy uh, that it's at Disney because it'll get seen. But we're not thinking specifically. It's sort of after the fact that you think of it as a Disney movie.